Hey guys, welcome to another in the continued adventures of uh, Will and Dave at in ITL land. Uh, glad to have you back. Um, hope you enjoyed last week's. We really we really enjoyed talking about that one, and putting that one together for you. Uh, once again, I'm gonna try and do the impossible. I'm gonna I'm gonna show you one example of a problem I ran into making the kick and the bass occupy the same space. How I let one win, how I chose who was going to win and why and that sort of thing. And I think this will be applicable and transferable to a wider range of of this process than just this one example. So pay close attention to the concept as much as you do the exact things that I was doing. A little bit of philosophy. It wouldn't be an ITL without a little bit of philosophy. So let me philosophize. Um, today we find ourselves consuming music less and less on radio and more and more on, on places like YouTube, Mog, Spotify, etc., iTunes. So back when radio stations ruled the world, if you did a mix, you only had to compete against other songs in, in the genre you were, you were working in. So if you were doing a hip hop mix, your only competition was other hip hop songs. If you're doing rock uh, on uh, you know stations like K-Rock, uh, you only had to compete against other rock songs, but now, in 2012, you have to compete against everything because you don't you don't know if a person's gonna gonna download um, the new Chris Brown or the new T Pain or the new um, Foo Fighters, and so when 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 one when a song comes on that's in a completely different Genre than 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 the than the one that, uh, that 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 preceded it. Sometimes you can, if you don't have enough to make it flow correctly from one song to another, the listener's going to think something's missing. So, I'm working on a rock song, but I treated it as if it were going to be played on a hip hop station. So let's check it out. I'm going to play you. Uh, we're going to work on the kick and, and the bass. I'm going to play you the drums and the bass for one couple of bars. Okay. That's the finished product. Let me show you let me show you what I started with. Here's the base. Now here's the bass before I treated it. Now, I don't know if you can hear it at home, but the bass has a, a little extra 80 cycles in it. Now let's listen to our kick drum. Okay. The that's the kick drum without any treatment. Let's go up here and see what we've done to it. So this is, this is kind of what I've done with a kick drum. Took a little of the tickiness off. Now, let me show you my parallel chain, the classic parallel chain. Okay, and then um, here's the sample. Okay, and if you notice, I probably have a, a let me take this off. I have, I have a little too much 100 in that sample. So let me play them to you, the kick and the bass without any processing on it. Okay, here we go. This is no processing. Okay, you can see you can see that it's not bad, but it's just not fulfilling. Now let me play it with a little bit of 100 out of the kick and a little bit of 80 out of the bass.
So guys, another little thing I did, you, 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 I, I don't know if you noticed, but uh, I borrowed a, a, a technique from the dance world. I actually side chained the bass with a kick. So every time the kick hits, the compressor brings the bass down a little bit. I, I'm guessing about dB and a half. And it's enough to leave a little gap for the kick to sit in and be more, more heard. And you, you adjust the release time and the attack time so that it'll, 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 be in, it'll give you a nice smooth lowering of the bass so that you won't hear the, hear the pumping. Now, in, in the dance world, you want to hear the pumping sometimes. Check this out, with it and without. You know, this is worth showing, showing it to you in context. So you can see that makes a subtle difference, but as we always say every week, it's a combination of several small, subtle things that make a big difference. Now guys, I wanna show you one other thing. Sometimes it's hard to hear the frequencies you, you're working on. I've got a button that, that sends everything to a sub, and, and all I'm hearing is the sub. So I'm only hearing from about 180 cycles down. And that's how I make these judgments about the frequencies I want out of the way of each other. Now, I don't, another philosophizing, I don't think, let me carve this out, let me carve that out. I listen to the, to the, to the, the sounds in the mix, and, and then I, 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 if I feel I'm not, not feeling them, then I try and find reasons why. And when I ascertain that the reason is because they have frequencies that, define that sound, but that frequency that defines the sound is being covered up by a similar frequency in another track and not let me hear it clear enough, then I'll go to the offending track and remove that frequency. Don't, don't think like carving out or putting a scoop for something to sit in. You can do that, but, 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 but work from the concept that you can't hear it the way you want to hear it. What's causing that? And let me remove that. Now, I, I experimented with this concept. If you don't have a sub, try this. Go to your stereo bus and use and find yourself a low pass filter. And I've got, I've, I've found with experimenting, I put this DSP on about 170 and then I compared it to what I was hearing from my sub and it's really close. So, so let, me, let me show you what, what, what I'm listening to. Here's without it. Here's with it. That was with no drums, no drums. Only drums, no bass. Both. So you can see how the from 170 cycles down, I, I've got those kind of working pretty good together, if I might say so myself. So this is a little technique that uh, that you might try in lieu of a sub. Um, I, I, I intentionally did this song that way uh, before I shared this with you to make sure the technique works. It's not going to work for everyone, but just try it. It might work for you. Let me play the whole little piece of the whole song so you can see what... Uh, what we ended up with. This song is by a group called AVM, uh, Robert Mackey. It was recorded at Soundworks Studio in Chicago, engineered by um, an up and coming really good engineer, Joe Lee, and it was produced by Robert Mackey and Robert's also singing.
great song. Uh, you'll be able to get that on his album. I'll, I'll give you the information about that when it comes out. So uh, keep them cards and letters coming. Let me know if I need to expand on this or if you never want to hear me talk about this again or uh, if I should just change careers. Hit me back. Love you guys. See you soon.